Do you know what I said last year 43 times to people that tried to hire me for voice acting gigs? No! No. Here's why. Hey, I'm Joe Zija. I've been a voice actor in Los Angeles for 10 years, done thousands of jobs, and I'm the founder of LearnVoiceActing.com, where I empower the next generation of voice actors to take control of their voice acting careers today. Okay, turning down work must sound pretty weird. I totally get it. So many people think we have this scarcity mindset where the voice acting industry only has a couple of jobs and they're all done by Chris Pratt anyway, and you have to be totally insane to say no to work. But Today, I wanna to talk to you about why I said no to so many jobs last year and why it was such a healthy choice. This is actually one of the biggest problems with all gig economies. The idea is that it's so difficult to get work or there's so little work out there that you can't possibly say no to anything. Some clients exploit this as well. They assume that you think every job is a gift from them and they expect to pay bottom dollar and offer less than stellar working conditions for the privilege of working on their project. The truth of it is, there are lots of reasons to turn down a job. I wanna to talk to you about three of them today so that you can feel empowered going forward and stop feeling desperate. I talk all the time about not approaching this career from a position of desperation with my students at learnvoiceacting.com. Avoid approaching any job or audition from a position of desperation. You don't need to need it. And if you wanna hear more about that, stick around to the end and I'll point you at another video that I think is gonna help that a lot. The first and most obvious reason you should turn down a job is the money. I could teach for days, and I do teach in my academy, all about fair rates for voice acting work based on industry standards, collective bargaining agreements by the union, and standards set forth by other organizations. I don't want to get too deep into that here, but I will say that it's important that you educate yourself about good rates so that you can make good choices about what work to take and what work to leave behind. Without this knowledge, you're going in blind to every negotiation. You'll believe a client who says that $500 for a national cable commercial is great because, wow, the idea of being paid $500 to talk into a microphone's still pretty foreign to you. Sounds good, right? But if you'd taken the time to get educated, you would have been able to see that that's not a good deal and that it's probably better for you to walk away from that job. So yes, I turned down a lot of jobs last year just because people were trying to lowball me. I know what I'm worth and I'm okay telling other people no when they don't want to pay it. There's another side to this principle though, and I talk about this when I teach a lot, and that's return on investment or ROI behind the microphone. Not all voice acting work is paid at the same rate per minute behind the microphone. As a matter of fact, most people ignore the large part of the industry that pays the best in favor of flashy things like anime and video games, which per hour don't necessarily pay well as commercials or corporate. That's not to say they're not worth doing, okay? It's some of my favorite kind of work. But when you're doing assessments of return on investment, you have to take into account both the amount of joy it brings you and the amount of money it brings you. That's an equation only you can do. So even though I love video games, there were weeks where I was so packed with higher paying work that I had to walk away and that's okay. That's a decision that I made intentionally and intentional decisions with the information you have are great things. What more can you ask for? The second reason to say no to a job, your spidey senses. Okay, this isn't exactly science, but it's something that everyone should cultivate. Understanding when a client is going to be more trouble than they're worth is a really important skill in any industry and voice acting is no different. If you saw my video about the three things that you can do that have nothing to do with your voice to improve your voice acting career, I talked about being easy to work with as one of the most important ones. All the talent in the world can't get you hired if you're a pain in the ass. What I'm trying to say here is it also works the other way. I turned down jobs last year because it was apparent right from the get-go that the client was gonna ask of me a lot and not give a lot in return. This could take the form of over-directing, asking me to fill out all kinds of crazy convoluted forms just to work with them, haggling on the price over and over again, asking me to wake up at five o'clock in the morning for a session, the list goes on. And it isn't limited to things that are patently absurd. Sometimes you just get a feeling that working for someone is gonna be difficult. You've done all you can to set clear expectations, but communication always seems to break down. They can't keep a calendar, all those sorts of things. These are the clients that are the most difficult to let go, but you need to get in the habit of firing them. Remember, not all costs in life have a dollar value. They're stress, time, emotional drain. I call them 80-20 clients after the Pareto principle that states that 80% of your problems probably come from 20% of your sources. Stick around to the end and I'll talk about another video you can watch about the 80-20 principle that's gonna help you avoid this situation in the future. The last reason to say no to a job that I wanna talk to you about is a little more philosophical. It's the fact that life isn't all about work. 
The biggest economic principle that I think is ignored in our everyday life is that of the opportunity cost. Everything you do, no matter whether it's a positive thing, a negative thing, something that pays you a lot of money, something that pays you a little bit of money, has an opportunity cost. When you choose anything, you are giving up the opportunity to do something else with your life. That could be time with friends and family, hike in the woods, a couple of deep breaths, listening to the music that you really like, getting other parts of your life in order that are distracting you from completing your goals as a voice actor, or a spouse, or a dad, or whatever. Sure, you could fill your entire day with auditions and jobs and all that, but is it worth it? What are you giving up? As an example, a story from me, one of the major trends I've seen lately in the voice acting industry is recording in the evening, the late evening. This happens because production companies are kind of popping up all over the place in Southeast Asia and they want to work on their hours. That's fine. That's fine. If that's good for you, that's good for you. But last year, I turned almost all of it down and that made up a large portion of the work that I gave up. So why did I do that? Even though they were offering fair rates, even though they were offering a good job environment, even in some cases, the project they were offering me was popular and I stood to gain a lot from a social capital standpoint as well. But was it worth giving up cooking dinner for my kids? Was it worth an evening with my wife? Was it worth giving up on winding down in front of a movie or a video game so that it felt like I didn't go to bed five minutes after I finished work and woke up five minutes before it started again the next day? To me, that answer was no. Now, this isn't my crusade against evening recording, although I could maybe make one because I think most of the time it's not necessary, but I'm using it as an example to illustrate my point that sometimes you can and should turn down work simply because you don't want to do it. We live in this hustle society where you need to go out and crush it all the time. And if you're not being productive, you're not worth anything. I want to impress upon you that there are lots of parts of life that are productive, even if they don't make money. There. I bet you didn't think a guy who owns a website called learnvoiceacting.com was gonna come out here and tell you that voice acting wasn't the most important thing. Oops. I mentioned a couple of other videos as I went through here, and if you haven't seen them already, you wanna check out the videos I have about 80-20 clients, and also the video about why your voice probably isn't the most important thing in your voice acting career. If you're ready for something more though, check out the link in the description below and you can get a free ebook or 20 minute training from me about how to get started on your voice acting career today without any experience. Thanks for the likes and subscribes that help me keep the channel growing and providing the next generation of voice actors with awesome education. Go get behind the mic and I'll see you in the next one.